This video is an introduction to algebra. You will be introduced to terms that you need to know in order to work within our algebra unit. You definitely need to be taking notes, so please pause the video when necessary so that you can keep up. What is algebra? We've all heard the word algebra. Maybe we have older siblings who've taken algebra. Some people love it, some people are scared of it. Well, algebra is just a mathematical language of letters, symbols, and rules used to find the unknown. It's pretty much what we're doing today, with the exception of we're now going to introduce some letters, and we're going to find the value of those letters. So let's start. Our first term is variable. Variable is something that we've already been using in math class, and you've probably heard of it in fifth grade. But a variable is a letter used to represent an unknown number. The value of a variable may change. Okay, so let's look at that. The value of the variable may change. Well, if you look at the word variable, it kind of looks starts with the word vary, V-A-R-Y. And vary means to change. Somebody may vary their hairstyles. That means that they come to school every day with their hair a different way. And that's what variable is. It's it's a letter and the value of that letter can change. So let's talk about the letters. You can use any letter of the alphabet that you choose, but one detail you need to remember is that all letters have to be lowercase. When you use an uppercase or a capital letter, that is usually reserved to represent a formula. So if I were you to use the expression 5 plus A, and I, were, I was using A as my variable, if I wrote that with a capital A, somebody might look at that and they might ask themselves, okay, is this A supposed to be a variable or is it supposed to represent the, for the area of something? So you need to make sure that whenever you write a variable, it's always going to be lowercase and not capitalized. One of the most popular letters used for a variable is X, followed closely by Y but it can be any variable you choose. We've been using n a lot. You want to make sure when you write your variables that you can tell the difference, you can tell them the difference between them and a number. For example, if I were to write a z, that could also look like a 2. So what I do is I put a little line so I know that that is a z and not a 2. The same thing for an s. If you write it really fast, that could look like a 5. So I always put like a little curly cue so that I know that it is the letter S. So you have to be careful because it is easy on some numbers to think of them as numbers if you're writing them quickly or if you're looking at them quick quickly. Okay, so if a variable is a value that changes, what about the numbers that don't change? Well, those are called constants. A constant is a specific number whose value does not change. In my expression example of five plus A, 5 is my constant. 5 is not going to change. It's not going to magically, poof, turn into a 7. It will always stay 5 in this expression. That's a constant. A, on the other hand, that is a variable, and that value can change. Then we have our operations. We're used to most of these operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. This year, we've learned about exponents or powers. And next year, you're going to learn about something called the square root. It looks like a long division symbol, but it's not. This is actually a square root symbol. And again, you will cover that next year in seventh grade. While we're talking about operations, let's go ahead and, and pause to think about the way we write multiplication and division. We have talked about this already in class, but I just wanted to revisit it. For multiplication, we're so used to using x as our multiplication symbol, but now working with variables, we know that x is a popular variable. So instead of using x, we can use a dot to represent multiplication, and we've actually started doing that this year. These three ways down here are new ways to represent multiplication, and you're going to see them a lot in algebra. The first way is if you have a number next to a variable, and there is no operation in between. There's no addition sign, there's no subtraction, it's just the number next to the letter. This represents multiplication. You can also write 
the variable in parentheses. You can have a number next to a variable inside the parentheses or next to another number in parentheses. There is no operation in between. When you see this, this also means multiplication. So you could have something like this. That means multiplication. You could also even have something like this. That means multiplication in number next to the parentheses with no operation in between. And of course our order of operations says that we would solve the parentheses first and get 10. Whoops. So then you would have 7 times 10. And then a final way is both in parentheses. You could have both the number and the variable in parentheses, and the parentheses are touching. There's no operation in between. Then that means multiplication. These three ways you're going to see a lot. You need to know them, so I would suggest you write them down. Now, division. Again, elementary, we've always used this division symbol. Okay, this backslash also means, means division, and you see that a lot if you're having to type something up because there is no division symbol on the keyboard, so the backslash is used to represent division. And this way down here, kind of in fraction form, this is what we've started using this year because that fraction bar right here, that means to divide. So this would be read as x divided by 2. This is the more popular way of writing division, especially now that we're going into algebra. Okay, continuing with our terms, let's talk about algebraic expressions. We have been working with expressions a lot. In our word problems lately, you've been told, write an expression and solve. Okay, an expression is just kind of like a little statement telling you what to do. An, ex an algebraic expression is an expression that contains one or more variables with one or more operation symbols. So you have to have at least one variable, and you have to have at least one operation symbol. So an example of an algebraic expression, 150 plus y. y is your variable. The operation is multiplication. And this 150, it's a, just a number. Remember, we call that a constant. Other examples, w minus n. Do I have a variable? Yes, I actually have two variables. Do I have an operation? Yes, I have a subtraction sign. So that means that this is an algebraic expression. What about this? This is read 2x. We just talked about this, a number next to a variable with no operation symbol in between. That means that it is multiplication. We're not going to read it 2 times x, I and mean, you can say that, but the way we read it is just 2x. That means two groups of x. So this is also an expression because the operation, even though you don't see the symbol, is multiplication. So what about some non-examples? Well, 12 minus 7. This is what we call a numerical expression. It has an operation and it has two numbers, but there is no variable. So it is not an algebraic expression. It's just a regular numerical expression. 15. Well, there is no operation. It's just a number or a constant. So it is not an expression. And this one over here, 9 divided by 16. Okay, yes, the the fraction bar means division, but there is no variable. Therefore, it is not an algebraic expression. So let's take a closer look at the parts of an algebraic expression. First part are the terms. Okay, terms are the parts of the expression that are separated by plus or minus signs, addition or subtraction symbols. Very important. Take a look at your example. Make sure you write this down. 12 plus 3y squared plus 4x plus 2y squared plus 4. So here is an addition sign here, here is an addition sign, here is another one, and there is another one. So it tells us that the parts of the expression that are separated, so everything that is separated by an addition, 12, that's a term. 3y squared, that's another term. 4x, that's a term. 2y squared is another term. And 4 is a term. They are all separated by plus signs. You could also have subtraction symbols there. Okay, those are terms. So in this expression, there are a total of five terms. Coefficients. 
coefficients are the numbers that are multiplied by at least one variable. Okay, take a look at your 4x. Okay, this is 4 times x. This 4 is your coefficient. It is the number that's being multiplied by a variable. And coefficients are always written in front or to the left of the variable. We don't write it this way. Okay, sometimes when you go fast, that could look like an exponent. So that is not the way to write it. Important detail to remember, the coefficient comes first. It comes before the variable. 3y um, squared. In this example, your 3 is your coefficient. It's the number being multiplied by the variable. 2y squared, same thing. 2 is your coefficient. It is the number being multiplied by a variable. 12 is not a coefficient. There is no variable with 12. 12 is just a constant, and the same with 4. Then we have like terms. Like terms are the terms that have the same variables raised to the same powers. So if I look at 3y squared, look at your variable. It is a y, and it's raised to the second power, y squared. Are there any other terms in this expression that have a y squared? Yes, 2y squared. The coefficients can be different. The 2 and the 3, they're different. That's fine, they can be different. But the variable and the power has to be the same. What about 4x? Do you see the variable is an x? And we talked about when you have a number and it doesn't show the power that's actually to the power of 1. That's what this is, x to the power of 1. Do you have any other x to the power of 1 in this expression? No, you do not. So there is no other like term for the x, for the 4x. Now, the last terms are 12 and 4, and those are constants. And even though they don't have a variable, we kind of consider them like terms because constants can always be combined together. And that is the purpose of being able to identify like terms is because you want to be able to combine all terms that are alike kind of to simplify the expression. And we're going to learn about that, combining like terms at a different time. But these are what like terms are. They have to have the same variable to the same power. And lastly, let's talk about an equation. What is an equation? An equation is a mathematical statement that two expressions are equal. An equation may or may not contain variables. I kind of think of an equation as a sentence, a complete sentence. It tells you everything you need to know. I think of an expression as like a sentence fragment. It only tells you part of the story. It doesn't tell you the whole thing. So take a look at this table. It might be a good idea to write the table down in your notes. But we're going to compare expressions and equations. We'll start with numerical. We call it a numerical expression or a numerical equation because there's only numbers. There are no variables. So an example of the expression would be 5 plus 4. It just tells you part of the story. But if you move on to equation, it gives you the whole story because it tells you what it equals. 5 plus 4 equals 9. And that's the main difference between an expression and equation is that the equation has the equal sign. And if you look at the word equation, it kind of starts with equal. So an expression will represent a single value, 5 plus 4. But an equation represents a relationship between two values or two expressions. So in this equation, it's telling us that 5 plus 4, that relationship to 9, is that they are equal. You could also have expressions or equations in words. A number plus 4. Well, a number, we don't know that number, so we can write this as an algebraic expression and use n as our variable for the unknown number. So n plus 4, that is your expression. A number plus 4 is 9. Is is our clue word that this means equals. So n plus 4 equals 9 would be our equation. And that's it for these notes.